Hello there people of the internet. A little while ago I made a video talking about what I would have if I had an 1850s loadout. And the the little bit of time in between the 1850s and the 1860s we saw a dramatic jump in technology. So now let's go ahead and jump up a decade and decide if it was the 1860s, what sort of loadout would I have if I was taking part in whatever was going on in the 1860s. I know the Civil War was towards the beginning half, but we're going to go ahead and look more at the later half of the 1860s because that's where development really started to take off. So I was wondering what I have in my arsenal that I would be able to use to represent what I would be using if uh, I was around in the 1860s and I was looking for a good, viable loadout, like cutting-edge technology for the time period. And I think I found some good stuff to be able to represent that. If this was the early 1860s, I'd probably go out with something like this right here. This being the uh, 1860 Henry. Not exactly the greatest of designs, but boy was it revolutionary for the time period whenever this had come out. At the time, it was using a 44 caliber projectile that had 28 grains of uh, black powder behind it. It was a rimfire cartridge, so it was not reloadable. And the 1860 Henry, the full-length rifle, held 16 rounds of ammunition, if memory serves me correctly. Now, uh, in a world dominated by muzzleloaders, you get something like this right here, which can sit here and cycle and fire very quickly all those 16 rounds until you have to reload. But even then, reloading those 16 rounds is going to be considerably faster than, uh, than loading uh, shot by shot of your muzzleloader. Your muzzle loader is going to be more powerful because you can fit more black powder behind your rounds versus this right here, which has a specific set amount. If memory serves me, I think this 44 caliber projectile was traveling at about 1,200 or so feet per second. I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me on that one, but I think it's somewhere around that ballpark. So uh, it is pretty much a pistol caliber carbine with all intents and purposes. But considering that this was going up against muzzleloaders, this right here was absolutely a force multiplier back in the day. And if this was the early 1860s, then I would absolutely 110% want something like this 1860 Henry. However, if this was like later on in the 1860s, then I would want to upgrade it to something a little bit better. This right here is actually an 1892 pattern, but it will serve as representation. So a little bit later beyond the 1860s, in about 1866 or so, Winchester came out with their own version of the 1860 Henry. It was basically the 1860 Henry, except they added a handguard to it, and they added a king's loading gate to the side to where you could load from the side of the receiver, as opposed to the 1860 Henry, which needed to be loaded up here uh, near the muzzle. So that was just a much faster, much more convenient loading system, and now you did not burn your hand on a metal barrel because you had this wood handguard to be able to help protect yourself. So essentially they're the same systems. This right here is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the 1866 Winchester, not the 1892, which is a completely different ball game. But essentially those were the same systems. And uh, I would probably go with the 1866 if that was out. I mean, this is kind of the 1860s loadout. So there was a lot of things that went on in the 1860s. I would take the 1866 if I had the option to. If not, then I would take the 1860 Henry. The muzzle loaders are a good option if you can shoot out at long distances, but I can't really touch out past 300 yards because of my visual capabilities and my capabilities as a shooter. So that 44 Henry rimfire cartridge is absolutely adequate in terms of uh, in terms of me being able to handle the things at the distances that I would need to handle them at because I can't really handle them beyond that. So that would be my primary, either the 1860 or the 1866. I just don't have an 1866, so I don't have that here to show off. And uh, my secondary, this right here is an 1872 uh, uh, Colt open top. This particular one uh, is a Uberti reproduction, and this is chambered N38 Special. In the 1870s, Colt came out with revolvers like this as sort of like a transitional revolver going from cap and ball revolvers to a more uh a what would you call it a more familiar revolver that more of us would be familiar with like the uh, single action army 
uh, being a cartridge fire revolver. There were cartridge fire revolvers that came before this right here, like say done by Smith and Wesson and whatnot, but they were uh, small, uh, more or less pocket pistols back during that time period. So if I was to choose a revolver, some sort of side piece, obviously it would not be the 1872 because this came out, you know, in the 1870s and not the 1860s, which is the time period that we're talking about. I would likely take my 1860 and I would figure out some sort of uh, conversion into metallic cartridges. I would get the idea because I'm like, hey, these revolvers, Smith & Wesson revolvers already take metallic cartridges. Why shouldn't these? So I would get the idea to stick the now existing and already in my arsenal 44 Henry Rimfire cartridges into a revolver and I would come up with some sort of design. I doubt it would be as brilliant as like a Richard Mason design, but it would more or less be something more along the lines of being able to take the cylinder out. It, it might be something similar to uh, the black powder conversion systems that we see with like uh, Pieta and Uberti and whatnot where uh, you actually take the cylinder completely off of the revolver to reload it and then put it back on. That might be something that I lean more into. But uh, the bottom line is I would figure out some sort of way, some sort of system to have a cartridge firing revolver so I would have much faster reload capabilities than if I were to be using a black powder revolver. So all in all, that is what I would pick. I would make sure that it that both of my systems are chambered in 44 Henry Rimfire because that is the cartridge that is around during the time period. In 1873, Winchester came out with the 4440, which was a center fire, so it could be easily reloaded, and that would be ideal. But it just doesn't exist yet. I don't know about it. It it simply is not a thing. Now, if I had the smarts and the capabilities to do so, which I must have if I am, you know, rocking a cartridge firing revolver, then I would figure out how to convert my 1860 Henry into a center fire, and I would take 1860 Henry rimfire cases, and I'd poke a hole inside of them, and I'd set them up with a, a, a musket percussion caps to where I could use those and I could reload those and that would just be my rifle system very unique system that is just with my knowledge of modern firearms that is what I would set up those systems if I was stuck with those systems for that time period of course I might not know anything about center fire or I might not know anything about the knowledge of what I have now uh, if I was alive during that time period and I probably wouldn't in all reality I would be stuck out there with like if we're talking top tier, I'd be stuck out there with a percussion cap revolver and an 1860 Henry Rimfire, and that's just what I would have. But this is me talking about the ideal situations for that time period. I would have to make a couple modifications to the designs, but boy oh boy, would those be absolute like pinnacle designs for that time period. If I'm out there rocking center fire systems that could be reloaded, and I'm out there rocking cartridge firing firearms, then like nothing, nothing could stop me, especially in a world dominated by uh, muzzle loaders. See, back then, uh, uh, muskets were very, very, very much the predominant thing. After the United States Civil War, I'm looking for a couple of these. After the United States Civil War, uh, a lot of your 1861 Springfields were converted into a essentially a trapdoor system. Before the trapdoor Springfield was a thing, the barrels were sleeved. They were a 50 caliber uh, system that took cartridge firing systems and had a trapdoor. And uh, those existed during that time period. If I did not have a lever action repeater, I might go for one of those single shots, but that still would not be ideal for my particular needs because one of those single shots, that's a lot of power. That's a lot of, uh, oh, what would you call it? I believe that those were also rim fires, so I can't reload those either. But that was a lot of power, and that was for uh, distances that I myself cannot really shoot at. So I would have my cartridge firing revolver, and I got a couple of couple of 38 specials inside of this thing. Back then, it would be more of a 44, but you know, it is what it is. I just sent a couple of rounds down there at that grill. And then since my rifle and my revolver would take the same ammo, let's say, I don't know, I'm using my revolver because it's convenient and it's right there, but I have a situation where, oh no, I need something that has a little bit more range. So I grab my rifle and let's say it doesn't have any ammo in it, so I pull the cartridges direct from my revolver into my rifle 
And now I can touch out to farther distances more capably. <laughs> that was cool. I like how much smoke comes out of this thing. That is rad as hell. So just my two cents. Uh, I would likely, I would likely pull that off if I had the knowledge to be able to pull that off. If I was living in, uh, in the 1860s, hopefully the later 1860s, not the earlier 1860s. Because if I was my age and my body type in the 1860s, early 1860s, I'd be killed in the Civil War. So hopefully I wasn't around for that because I don't want to take, I don't want to take part in that. I'm good on that. Anyway, folks, uh, this is pretty much all I have to say on the matter. If I did not have the means to be able to customize my stuff, then, you know, standard percussion cap revolver and an 1860 rifle, that would probably be my go-to, as I feel like that would be the go-to for a lot of people. But since I'm poor, I'd be lucky to get my hands on, like, a flintlock musket smoothbore, and that would be what I have. Like, here you go, you enjoy, that's better than nothing, and with my lifestyle, that is probably what I would be stuck with. But this is best case scenario. Thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I reckon I'm going to go ahead and pick this stuff up and bring it inside. And I will see you guys on the next episode. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> Poor man's Garen. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.